Okay, hi everyone. I'll uh, just wait a few minutes as, as there are still quite a few people coming in. Um, welcome to the second part of the Cup Schaefer series. Part one is available on YouTube and I'll post the link shortly uh, for those who missed it. Tonight in part two, we're going to focus on the Kavonas one should have during the Takir Schaefer based on the famous Maimo of the Mitzvah Rebbe. The Hovni of Takir Schaefer, which is, um, you can find in the, the Siddha with Dach, and it's also the front of my sermon. And I'll also post the link in the chat for those who want to uh, have a look at it. Um, we're very lucky that we have Dr. Lowenthal tonight to present tonight's share. Dr. Lowenthal, um, I believe, received a special hurrah from the Rebbe to um, get a PhD in the Mitzvah Rebbe's Chassidus, and he has been teaching the Mitzvah Rebbe's Chassidus for many, many years, and is uh, well known the, the world over for his uh, clear and um, great uh, shiurim. Um, when I was growing up in London, we used to daven on Shabbos upstairs in the uh, in the big hall, and uh, the Fabrengans on Shabbat Zavarchem and the regular Shabbos were downstairs, and they used to go on for many hours. And as young ch children, we used to go upstairs and play and run around in the shore, which was very empty, um, except for one man who was always under his talus, davening very slowly, word by word, with um, to the tunes of famous Chassidshin Gunim, and that was Dr. Lowenthal. So I think it's uh, appropriate that he should be the one who's um, teaching us this mime and can tell us a bit about the kavonis, which are uh, which we should have when blowing the shofar. So without further delay, uh, Dr. Lowenthal, over to you. Okay, right. Um, are you able to hear me? Can you hear? Yes. Okay, lovely. Um, so, um, what I'm going to ask um, is if I will be able to share a screen, um, because I've tried to put together a PowerPoint um, to explain, like to summarize the different bits of this mimer. Uh, it's a very long mima. Um, as uh, as Mati explained, it's um, it's in the Siddur, in the Siddur in Dach, and um, the new edition of the Siddur in Dach. There's a splendid new edition in two volumes. Um, they've put all the footnotes from the end of the Siddur in Dach uh, on the page, and they've also updated the footnotes and put a lot of interesting information. So some of the material, particularly at the beginning um, of, the, um, of my little presentation, uh, is actually um, from the footnotes, uh, because that helps us get a, um, um, a, a perspective on this mimer. Now, the Rebbe refers to it as a mimer by the Mittler Rebbe. Um, there is in Hanochus Repinchus, um, uh, there is a mima by the Alter Rebbe, which basically covers the same in Yonim, but in a different order. Um, um, but the way it's presented in the Siddha, that's, um, it's the Mittler Rebbe's uh, style, and, and the Rebbe refers to it as being from the Mittler Rebbe. Um, so, um, um, now can I ask, um, how many of you, if you can just show with a finger, you know, how many of you actually have the mima in front of you? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So what I propose to do is what I often do uh, teaching my marim, not always, but uh, often, is that I'm going to go through it in English. I'm, I'm gonna, so I'll be keeping fairly close to the text, but I'll be going through it in English. Um, and, um, and, and what I want to try to do is that we should understand it. And so anyone has a question, please, if the host would enable people to unmute themselves if they want, anyone please unmute yourself and ask the question, interrupt, ask the question, because the whole idea is that it has to come into our seichel 
and be meaningful to us. So, um, uh, you know, when um, a bar mitzvah boy says a mime, you don't interrupt. <laughs> Your audio is gone. <laughs> but, um, but um, or a chassan for that matter. Um, but if we're learning a mime together, and it's um, the, the Rebbe writes in Seif Amin Hogin, that the Friediger Rebbe would often tell the Baal Takiyah to learn this mime um, before blowing the shofar. Um, and there's a footnote somewhere, Davka should be the morning of the day of Tkia Shofa, um, which, and it's a quite heavy mimer and, uh, you know, adds, adds considerably to the uh, time organizing, you know, getting up, getting to shul and going to the mikveh, um, going to shul in Guten Zeiten. So, um, um, so, um, so let's, I think I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be saying it from the, um, I have like, a, you know, a photocopy from the, um, from the new edition of the Sidrim Dach. Uh, I'm going to be saying it from there. I've got the PDF um, that Moti sent out. And uh, I also have here the Machsa. Um, so um, occasionally the paragraphs are different, um, but we'll try. We'll try and understand it. So let me share screen and um, put up this PowerPoint. Right. Let me see. Okay, are you able to see that um, title page? Yeah, okay, fine, thank you. Now, so it's called Lahoman Indian Tkir Shafal Pi Kavonis Abel Shem Tovzal. And um, the um, interesting question is um, well, here's just a little bit about the history of the Maima that we've already covered. Um, and um, uh, and so then we go into this the kavana of the Baal Shem Tov. Now the interesting thing is, we do not have a text saying this is the kavana of the Baal Shem Tov for Tzikir Shofar. We have a text for going to the mikvah that's printed in Kesa Shem Tov and in various other places, but we do not have a text on on Tzikir Shofar. So um, it seems that there was such a thing, but, but it's been lost. So the, uh, in the um, edition, uh, in, the, in the new edition of the Siddha, um, they put a couple of quotes, which I think are very helpful. So the first one is from the Igris Kodesh of the, of the Friediger Rebbe. Tekir Shofa is crying out with a simple sound, Abba, Abba, Tata, Tata, Father. And the Aleph of Abba is a crucial concept here. It's as if the sound the shofar makes is the sound of an Aleph, Aleph. And that is crying out to our Father Hashem. Now then we have from a Maimah of the Friedegger Rebbe, a very neat a uh, summary, which in a sense is really a summary of the whole Maimah uh, in, a, in a few lines. So the point is that coil, coil is an exalted thing. Coil comes, that's Hevel Alev, the breath of the heart, from that comes the coil. And coil is very high, and it's higher than Dibble. But nonetheless, it is the source of Dibble. It's got the source of Dibble in it. So Tekir Shoifa, says the Friedrich Rebbe, with the Kavon of the Baal Shem Tov, is to draw the Tainuk into the, the Tainuk, which comes from a very high level, to draw the Tainuk into the upper Dibur of the Ten Mamoris of Malchus, through crying out, Abba, Abba. So our calling, Tata, Tata, Abba, Abba. We are calling to Hashem, and drawing that Tainug into the upper dibble of the Asura Mamoris and 
and, and, and bringing that down and ultimately coming down into the world. And the, and the note of the shofar is actually an aleph like the, the word ab, the word father. So that's the, um, um, so, so that's the basic, um, uh, of the Friedrich Rebbe's few line summary of what actually is the Kavona of the Baal Shem Tov. Now, the Mitla Rebbe is going to take, you know, different dimensions of this step by step by step and introduce uh, various other material. Let's see if we can understand it. Ah, so, so here's the continuation from that mime of the Friedrich Rebbe. And this is the meaning of the Tekiyas according to the Kavon of the Baal Shem Tov. We're crying out, Abba, Abba, save me. Abba, have mercy on me. Because the Tekiyas are bringing new life force into the worlds and all created things through the simple sound, which is an Aleph. And that Aleph is the intermediary, the Mamutsa. Now that's a key concept in this Maima. The Aleph, which is the sound of the shofar, is the mamutza connecting Hashem and the universe. So the whole idea of blowing shofar is we are standing there as a mamutza between Hashem and the universe, bringing the Elokus down. Um, now, um, before we actually start the Maima, I'll mention um, that recent Shia Tanya, is Igeris HaKodesh Simon Yud Dalet. And Simon Yud Dalet presents this idea in a very basic way that every year there is a new surge of life force, of Chayas coming into the universe from Hashem. And our blowing of the shofar and our davening draw that down into the world. And, uh, and then it happens every day as well, the Alter Rebbe explains. So that is, uh, in a way, that's the background of the whole concept that the shofar is bringing down this new flow of life force. So now we come to the mimer itself. Now, so the Altar Rebbe, so the, the Mittler Rebbe says, now first of all, let's give an introduction. There's the idea of coil and dibur. So now I'm actually taking the, the text, the Hebrew text of the Maim, and I'm just saying it in English. And that's what we see, that with Koil and Dibbo, there's a Mamutza between the Koil and the Dibbo. And the Mamutza is not on the level of Koil, and it's not on the level of Dibbo. It, it combines both, and it's the intermediary of both. Because the true concept of Koil is a simple Koil Pashut which is made up of Esh, Maim, and Ruach. And that is called, or, um, or it's called Hevel. It's called Ruach. It's called Ruach, or it's just Hevel, breath. And it's not an, at, at the level of the letters of speech at all. And that, so that's, that, that's coil. Coil is beyond speech. Whereas speech, Dibur, that's Dafka with expressing separate letters which come down in different ways and they're made up, they combine in different ways. And so that, so there's a very big distance between speech from the nature of the simple coil which comes from the Hevel Alev. However, we see that coil and Dibba have a connection between them because the simple coil which comes out with the five consonants now the hey moitso sape are the five kinds of consonant. I've put on the um, screen the English terms. Um, these five kinds: guttural, sibilants, fricatives, labials, dentals. That's what linguists talk about when they're talking about language. But it's an ancient concept. Dividing up the five kinds of consonant, it's found in Sefer Yitzira. Um, and very often it is there in, uh, in Hasidus. And the idea of five is to do with the idea of five gvuros. So the simple coil is divided up in this way by the consonant, so it becomes language instead of just a note. So that's the way in which um, the, um, 
uh, the 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 coil become the simple coil through the process, if you like, of the five consonants divides into the letters of speech, and as it says in the Zaya Kodesh, coil and dibba are like klal upra. So the coil is the klal and the dibba is the pra, and the pra needs the klal and the klal needs the pra. So the union is that there's a mamutz which joins them. And that's what we see, that it's impossible to um, present a koel poshut um, without saying the letter Aleph. So now we come to the mamutza. The letter Aleph is the mamutza, we could say. To get from Hevel Alev to Dibba, there's the Aleph, the Mamutsa, the intermediary, and otherwise the Hevel Alev wouldn't be heard. So let's look back in the Lotion of the Maimon. Because in the, without the expression of the Aleph, we wouldn't be able to hear the, this Koyal Pasha, it wouldn't exist. So the letter Aleph, the Ah, that is what is coming into the world. That's when we express that sound, this sound is heard with an aleph, and he goes into different ways of pointing the aleph. It's a, ah, or ha with a hey, or a, oh, or a, or he puts um, uh, other consonants, gay, da, fa, or different pointing, ga, da, or with malupam, gu. Um, but the point is, but with, there has to be some kind of uh, initial sound, initial letter, which is the beginning of the sound, and that initial letter is the Aleph. And so even though we hear the letter like O oh, and R, ah, this cannot be um, with uh, the shlemus of the letter Aleph as it comes in the letters of speech, because we, when, when we want to say the word and the letter Aleph, what happens is, just one second, what happens is we, we put the letter Aleph, we say Aleph Lamed Pei, we have the letter Aleph Bemiluyoi, so that Aleph Lamed Pei um, is, the, um, uh, is the full letter Aleph, and he discusses that idea that the, the, the way that language works, that each letter has got its milui, but at the same time, when the letters combine together, they, it is the simple sounds of the letter which are connecting. We don't, we don't actually say the, the letter with its milui, but we connect the different letters together, like the three letters oma, and like the letters that when, when, when they're said by themselves, they join together in one dibu, and the, and the letters of that, of, that, of that statement, they are coil. But, it's, it's, uh, but the only thing is, they are connecting with their root that, it, that you have the dividing of the sound through the chitoch oasis, through the different um, consonants. So when we say just one letter, we have to say it with its milu. If we're just saying Aleph, we say Aleph Lama Pei, or, or Reish, Reish Yud Shriyam, or Tzadik, and, and, and Tov. But when we're just saying one word, it just comes, one, a, 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 a simple letter. The letter Aleph, it comes out as a coil portrait. So that's the, the way that language and, and the simple coil connect together. Now, um, Sorry, I'm just trying to. Now, now generally, um, Now, I just want to check that we have this. Yeah, so in the in the PDF, this is on the second um, this is on the second page of the PDF. The Hine Lahovinata. So here he's explaining the idea of uh, the Mamutsa. Um, and 
giving um, uh, just uh, giving the summary before we actually go into it. Whenever there's a mashvi and a mekabel, there's a mamutza which includes both of them, because in themselves the mashvi and mekabel are too remote from each other. And then it comes on to a marshal of the seed in the ground. So let's first uh, uh, see the way he, he puts it. This idea of, of the mamutza. Now, to understand why this, the expression of the letter Aleph vocally, since it's uh, completely remote from the actual letters of speech, so the pure sound is, is, uh, is distant from speech, and also why the expression of this letter Aleph, let's first consider the whole idea of making one thing from another that we have with Mashvi and the Kabul. Mashbia is one element, then transferring something to the makabu. Now it's impossible that there should be flow in the existence of the makabu from the mashbia, except in the way that first of all there's a mamutz in the middle, and that mamutz should combine aspects of the mashbia and also aspects of the makabu. And and that is, and through this mamutz, there should be expressed the hashva from the mashvia to the makabu, because you can't compare the mashvia and the makabu. And how can the mashvia contract itself so much that from it should become something which is not on its level? So first of all, there has to be the mamutza, which has got a quality relating to the olu, to the makabu, that the mashvia is able to relate to. And then there can be the hashpa to make something from the mahus um, uh, uh, of, of, of the illa making the olu, even though the olu, the thing that's caused, is not on its level. Similarly, without the ent- without this entoy, without this mamutza, where the where there's an aspect of the mashvia, you see, there's the the makabu has to be in the mamutza, and the mashvia has to be in the mamutza. And if you didn't have both sides, then it wouldn't be able to work. And so then he gives um, a example at the end of that paragraph, um, which uh, is in brackets, um, is the idea of a seed in the ground. So here we have the interesting way in which Hasidus explains the process of growth of a seed in the ground. So you have the initial stage. One second. You see, you have the initial stage of the seed. And then the way it puts it in Hasid is the seed starts rotting. It starts breaking up. And what is happening to it is that it's changing and it's beginning to grow. But the, but the way Hasid explains, the ruchnius in the seed is triggering off the power, the koya chatzameach, which is in the ground. And that koya chatzameach now collects with the seed, and from that comes the growth of what is being grown. So here we have this in a few lines here. So the seed which rots in the earth, from the ruchnius of the seed, it rises up and connects, it's absorbed in the koya chatzameach, the power of growth, and that is the power which makes growth takes place, and it draws down the the spiritual koyach ruchni in order to make a new thing grow, the wheat or whatever it is that is growing, that physical thing, through the combination of the spiritual quality in the seed, which arouses the spiritual koyach hatzameach. Right, so now we have the next paragraph in the, um, uh, in the, in the PDF that Motsi sent round and also in the, um, uh, and also in the, um, in the Masa. So let me turn this off, one second. Now, why isn't it moving? Right. So here, this, this simply uh, summarizes what we've already been saying. The ruchnis in the seed arouses the kochat etc., and that's how the thing grows. 
So the ruchnius in the seed is the mamutza between the physical seed and the spiritual koyach hatzameach. So all the time, the focus, of course, is on blowing the shofar. The ruchnius in the seed, that's the blowing of the shofar. Oh. That's the, that, 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 that is the e, connection between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. Now, now we have um, the paragraph the beginning with Dugma Ladova. So here's another example of Seichel and Midas. Now, the, ri- the, the radiance of a spiritual Haskalah, the, the radiance of the, of the Haskalah, the radiance of the idea of the thinking is spiritual, it's Ruchni. And it becomes enclosed in the Midas, which are in the mind, first of all. You see, we're talking of getting from the Midas in the Seichel to the heart, from the intellectual concept in the mind, down to arouse a, 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 a experience of emotion in the heart. A person learns Chassidus and becomes inspired. What are the steps in that? So the first thing is that in the learning of something exciting, spiritually, the first thing is, that there is the or the radiance of the intellectual idea, which is something spiritual. And the first step, it is enclosed in the midst of a seichel tchila. There are emotions in the mind. And through them, the seichel flows down to come into something else, to become a real hisvailus hamidus, the excitement of the person, the enthusiasm of the person. And he's, he's in he or she, they're enthusiastic because of the idea that they were thinking about in their mind. So when we consider this in terms of analyzing the Mamutsa, the source of the Espiris of the Midas was first of all absorbed in the spiritual Seichel. And through the power of Midas, which is in the Seichel, because in Seichel there are Midas as well. Because these Midas, they have the quality of the hispilus that the person's later going to feel in his heart, and they are the source of that hispilus. And so they are also the last aspect of the power of the spiritual seichel. As is known that from the last level, lowest level of the elyon, of the upper one, becomes the source for the takhton, for the lower one, and that is the mamutza. So the midas of the seichel are the lowest aspect of the seichel, and they are in fact the source of the spiritualist virus in the heart, right? It's, uh, it should be emphasized in this, um, uh, in, in this slide uh, that, that when it says his virus of the midas, the last line, it means of the heart. Um, uh, so, so therefore the midas of the seichel are the intermediary. Now, if we can just pause for a moment, the style of the Mittler Rebbe is to bring many Mishalim to explain something. And looking at this way, and looking at that way, it doesn't come up in this Maimah, but it does in some of his Mamarim, that he'll go through a whole way of explaining and say, you know what, Loikanal, not, not like that. Let's look at it another way. And it's all as if we are following the thought of the Rebbe. He's inviting us into this thought process where he is analyzing this concept. And, uh, you know, you can, all, you can say it very briefly, like we had in the slide at the beginning. That's, uh, you know, you, you, in a sense, you can say it all in four or five lines. But the Mittler Rebbe wants this perception that Hasidus is transmitting to us to really become part of us. And so seeing it in different relationships, different aspects, you know, and you suddenly see this example and you see that example and you see the way that this is actually the way in which the world exists. There's all the time this different aspect of a mamutza, a mamutza here, a mamutza there. And you're suddenly aware of this, perme- the, the whole of existence is permeated by this model of the higher level and the lower level and the mamutza in between. And there are all kinds of different ways in which one is able to see that. 
Now, especially when we're talking about the process which goes from the highest level of mind down into emotions, from emotions into speech, and it could be from speech into action, which is actually the model of what is happening by blowing the shloifa on Rosh Hashanah. We're drawing the elokus down from the highest level, down, 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 into the world. And, and it's a matter of seeing that, of seeing the reality of that. And let's have a look at the next step. Because the next step is um, from, now that's in the middle of the paragraph still. And similarly, from the emotions, so the person has emotion in his heart. And now he's going to say something about that. So from the breath of the heart, you see, you've got the emotion in the heart. And from the heart is a breath, is a hevel halei. So from the breath of the heart, there's a koil poshut. So, so in this process also, there has to be a mamutza, and that is the letter aleph, which is the source of all the other letters, and it's the first letter of the Aleph base. And from the Aleph come all the other letters through the five kinds of consonants. And in that way, the Hevel of the heart is able to connect with all the other words that the person wants to say. So if we just had the Hevel of the heart, the breath of the heart, which is a simple sound, that wouldn't be able to join without, with, with actual language and, and the complexity of language, without having a mamutza, an intermediary. And that is the letter Aleph, which is heard with that sound. And that's the first source to all the other letters in speech. And it's got the generality of speech in the letter Aleph. So if we keep thinking shoifa, so in the shoifa, we're calling with that simple call of the shreifa, ah, right? But that ah actually has within it, it's the aleph which has all other letters in it. And it's got the whole generality of speech in it. And it's the lowest level of the heaven of the, of the heart, the breath of the heart, when it comes out in a flow of shefa, which comes out to divide up through the five consonants, the different kinds, as the gutturals, and so on. And because of this Hevel Alev, which comes out in those five consonants, first of all, it expresses, it, it, it comes in the letter Aleph, which is the source of everything afterwards. Then it's able to divide up into the different letters through that letter Aleph, which we hear and we have the actual language coming, coming out. So then he gives an example of the, um, of the word Vayoyma. So we've got a slide on that. So this is an example, the word Vayoyma. So it comes out, now Vayoyma doesn't begin with an Aleph, but the five letters are from different sources. The Aleph is a guttural in the middle. You've got Vav and Mem, which are from the lips, Bumaf. Resh is from the teeth, the dental. But first is the Aleph, as the Mamutso, which then divides into the other letters, right? So that's an interesting aspect here, that the, the Aleph is the beginning, whatever the letters are, because the Aleph is the source of all the letters, and it is the essence of the breath. And so that is the sound of the Shreifa. So implicit in the sound of the Shreifa is all language. Now we know from Shai Yechud Ve'emun or Perik Aleph, that all existence is made by language. The Asorum Amoros coming down into the world and all the time flowing and giving existence to everything. So in a sense, the, uh, the uh, teachings about Rosh Hashanah are a further comment on what it says in Shai Yechud Ve'emun or Perik Aleph, that that flow is a cyclic flow. And so, and it goes back to its source on every Rosh Hashanah, and then it flows down again. And so it's a flow of language, of the Asura Mamoras, which then divides up into all the nouns, all the words that there are in the language describing anything, right? So um, um, uh, we, you, you might have a, a, a video camera 
uh, on your on your screen or something like that or in your screen. Um, so we don't know what the actual Loshan Kodesh is for that video camera. But there is, there's a Hebrew word, an Ivrit word, but we don't know what the actual Loshan Kodesh, Kabbalistic word is. But that Kabbalistic word is the source of life force of the video camera. And so, and so that is really included in the Aleph, the Ah of the Shofar. So that's a, um, um, so that's a, um, uh, an incredible perspective on the shofar that in that sound, um, there is in a sense all of existence. Now let's just um, look at this. Uh, um, and I think we can go on to the next paragraph, Ukamoy Chain. Right? We've got Ukamoy Chain. Ukamoy Chain Mamash. So this is on page 16 of the, um, uh, of the PDF, uh, which is basically, uh, the, the PDF is from the Master, I can see. Okay. So, um, so page uh, Roman 16, um, Ukamoy Chain. Now, now this applies also to letters of Machshava, right? So let's, so that's the flow from Seichel to thought. Now, so just as the Midas, just as the emotions are completely on a lower level than the Seichel, so that there has to be a flow from the seichel to the midas, it has to have a, uh, a mamutza. So also when you consider the letters of thought compared with the power of seichel, the spiritual power of seichel, there's also a gap. And so therefore you have to have a uh, mamutza over there. So the letters of thought received from the seichel. And the same way that the dibble receives from the 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 hevel alei, from the breath of the heart, um, also so there's this process of transfer. The only thing is the sound of the oasis of thought is called kolop nima the bina, the inner the inner voice of bina the loy mishtama, the inner voice which is not heard. So. So one must say that this also has to have a mamutza, um, as we had in the other examples, and so too in the case of the letters of thought, because as we had with the, with the words vayoymer, um, so then we have the word vayoymer, the way it is in machshava, that a person thinks the combination of letters that makes this word vayoyma. So the, the basis of that, the, the thought which divides up into this or ha which is the radiance of seichel enclosed in this word, comes through a, a mamutza, an intermediary, and that is from the letters machshava and their first source. And it's also the last aspect of the seichel. So so, and so what is that? And through that, you get the, uh, the actual word that you're able to think. And the Id, and so what is the Mamutza? In the Seichel, there are letters. Now, even though the Seichel itself is beyond language, but in the Seichel, there are letters. Now, we're here talking about the power of Seichel. It's different to thought. We're not really, we're not usually conscious of our Seichel. We are conscious of the thoughts that we have but higher than thought is the actual power of Seichel. But in that power of Seichel, there are oisius. Now, oisius are letters, and they are also definitions. And it may be different ways of defining something. But they are there in a concealed way, very much concealed, absorbed in the essence of the spiritual Seichel. So, because every koyach, every power, like, speech or whatever it might or or, um, or, or sight there 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 is um, uh, there is certain letters that it has 
and the way it's revealed in a Matthias in existence, this way or that way, that a Seichel and Svara, that one idea can be written in this way, and also it can be written in another way, even though it actually means the same thing. You can, you can describe the same concept using completely different words. One set of words describes the concept this way, and then you have another set of words which are describing the same concept, but it's completely different words. So therefore, so these possibilities of words, they're included in the Koyach of Seichel much higher than the actual letters of thought. So the Seichel is a realm of possibility, infinite possibility, you could say, where there could be all kinds of different ideas which flow down into different formations of letters. And the Maimah gives the example of the idea of the thought, the letters, Adoi Noilom. Now that is the concept of Hashem's mastery of the world. And one thinks about this idea of Adoi Noilom in one's thought. And one can, and, and that is something we can feel and we can think about them in distinct ways. But before one thinks about them, there is in one's Haskalah, in the mind, in the Koyach of Seichel, there are these letters, Adoin Olam, but they're hidden there. It's there. We don't notice them because they're so subtle and they're so much observed in this Seichel of Adoin Olam. So, so, so that means um, uh, there, there, are, there are spiritual, um, there are spiritual um, levels. One second, we're going up to, we're going to look at this uh, more. So there are these spiritual levels, um, and as there are these spiritual letters, so just as there are in language there are 22 letters, and in thought there are 22 letters, uh, and, and, and this is very different from the Aleph of the Ko Poshul, because in the Ko Poshul, in the simple sound, it doesn't divide up into 22 letters. But... The, the letters in the Seichel itself, they are the Mamutsa. So we have the Kol Posh, which begun, and then we have the Seichel and Mamutsa, and that has got the essence of the Seichel, which is beyond the Oisius. And then we've got the actual letters, about, and which, are, which, are, which are there as well. Let's have a look at the slide. The beginning of the letters of Seichel is the Aleph, and the source of the letters of Seichel the, the, the letters of Seichel are the source of the 22 letters of thought. Now, the letters in Seichel relate to the higher aspect of Seichel, beyond letters. When the Aleph of the letters of Seichel has within it the Kol Pnimi of Bina, which we mentioned before, the Kol Pnimi, the Lo Yishtama, which is in the herd, it flows into thought. And through the five Gvuras of Mansapach, it divides up into the 22 different letters. Now, it's interesting, this five Gurus and Mansapach seems to be like the equivalent of the five types of consonant. That's the He Gurus and the five kinds of consonant, He Moitsa Saper. And that's like the Hevel Alev being divided up into the letters of speech through the five kinds of consonant. Now, so... Um, Right, okay, so let's go on. Vahan Nimsho. We call now, that's on the next page of the PDF. Vahan Nimsho, we call now. Vahan Nimsho. Now, all this is speaking about the letters of thought, the letters of speech, the Hevel Alev. So, what's the Nimsho? When we consider the way it is above in the letters of speech and letters of thought above, because it's known that Hashem created Oilam Habo with the letter Yud. And um, so, so there we have Oilam Habo, which is the realm of Bina, of Machshova, the Alma Discassia, the hidden realm. And with He, Hashem created Oilam Hazar. And that's the letters of speech, which is Malchus, which is the revealed realm, Alma de Iskavia. So, just as in the relationships that we have below, that in the, the lower level, 
there's a mamutza between the Hevel Alev and actual speech, that's the Aleph. So on the higher level, there's a mamutza between Bina and the letters of thought. And this too is the letter Aleph, which is the first of the letters. And, and so there we have this, uh, um, this, uh, this, this, this lengthy, quite lengthy paragraph, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's saying the way in which um, we, we have this chain of connections. Um, and so then we come uh, near the end of the paragraph. That's what it says, Ki yud olamin. With the letters yud ke Hashem forms the world, with yud oilam haba and with hey oilam haza, and that means Bina and Malchus. And because the Hey Gvuris, Man Sepach of Bina, they divide the letters in Machshavo, which come down into speech and become, which is called the five Moitzes Aper, the five types of consonant. So putting that together, the, the five Gvuris and the five kinds of consonant, as, as it says in the Zoya, that Ima, that means Bina, lends her garments to her daughter, which is Malchus. As it says, the mother is like the daughter, the daughter is like the mother. And so that's the way in which Hashem forms the world. So this is the process of creation. It's as if what the Mitra Rebbe is doing here is like opening up the, um, the bonnet, if you like. You know, you open the bonnet of the car and you can see the engine. You see all the different bits of the engine. You know, here the cylinders, here's this, here's that all the different bits. And so the Mithra Rebbe, he's, he's opening up this perspective on this process of flow, of, of levels from the essence of Seichel and the Seichel which is beyond letters. And then the way there's an aspect of Seichel which has within it hidden letters. And then there's the step where it begins to connect with actual letters of thought. And then from letters of thought, it comes to letters of speech with the aspect of the Hevel Alev, the breath of the heart coming into it as well. And the way in which this flow of, um, of, of Ruchnius to the Mitla Rebbe, it's an absolute reality. When he says, Vahanimsho, he's looking at a total reality and he wants to share that reality with us. Now, we then come, um, sorry, we now, we, we, we now have the next, um, another, uh, another uh, image. Ume'ata yesh lahaktim, right? So ma'ata yesh lahaktim, it's lower down on page 17 in the PDF and in the must. So now there is a second Hagdoma. So all this was the first Hagdama. And now we, um, um, we have the second Hagdama, which is a new way of describing the whole thing. Now, let's... Um, um, okay, let, 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 let's uh, look at it inside. That's something which is mentioned many times in Eitz Chaim. It talks about the unity between Abba Be'ima, which is Chochma Bina, from which comes the Tipa Abba, the seminal drop of Chochma. Now, Mipsori Echze Elakai, which is today's Shir Tanya, incidentally, the whole idea that when we look at the way that just as Hashem fills the world, so the Neshama fills the body, and we can see various aspects in parallel, and that's a basic concept in Hasidus. So since we see that when a person has a certain idea, a new idea, now there's a, a source from which that comes, and that's called the muscle. That the muscle considers every idea and every piece of wisdom and brings it from, uh, from hell and from concealment to revelation. Now this marker is called the koyach ha-seichel, the power of seichel. So what there is in the power of the person to think up that Vachochma, the way it is before he thought of it, um, it's absorbed in his Seichel, in his Koycha Seichel, that is able to think that. It's in the realm of possibility. Something he could be expressing, and at this point, it's in the realm of possibility. And so, after it's actually come down, that idea has been expressed. 
it's uh, it's got it's on a completely different level to the hiyuli seichel to the infinitely possible power of seichel which is beyond which is the source of all ideas. But even so, from this power comes down the revelation of this sim, of this seichel. But it comes from ayin to yesh. Now that's similar to the way in which the seminal drop begins in the mind. And this, and this also, it draws down from the inwardness of the mind, which is the koyach of the seichel of the, of the, of the maskil, the, that means the koyach maskil, the, the, uh, the infinite possibility of the koyach maskil. And this is the lachluchis, which is in the source of the moichin. This is the fluidity, which is in the source of the moichin, which thinks every idea, and from here comes the spiritual drop in the, the seminal drop in the mind. So we got two pathways. One pathway is an idea, and another pathway is the seminal drop, because there's a concept in the way that Hasidus explains the process of birth and reproduction, that the seminal drop begins in the mind, and it goes down the body, and then it goes into the nakeva and it becomes a child. Now that. So we've got, i put this slide as a kind of a question. A new idea emerges from the source of Seichel. So does the seminal drop. That also emerges from the source of Seichel. Which relates more closely to the source of the Seichel? Now that's a very interesting issue. Is the spiritual realm the main thing? Or is the practical thing the main thing? And the answer is the drop, the seminal drop is the main thing. Because that is the practical, that's in Olam Hazab, in this physical world. And to prove that, that that child is connected to the highest level above is because the child born from that seminal drop has got a nefesh sikhlis, which means that the essence of seichel is in the drop. And so even though this seminal drop is very physical, it's got more connection with the father than does the idea, which is only a gleam of the source. Now that is the crucial concept of the shofar. Why is it? Why is it that we blow this very, very Gashmadiga object on Rosh Hashanah? Why is it that it's such a tangible material thing? Because we're entering into the reality of the world. And so like the seminal drop, the seminal drop has more connection with the ultimate source than the spiritual ideas or even the words that a person might say. So the words that a person might say are eclipsed, as it were, by the actual practicality of the blowing of the shofar. Um, so I think we can now go to the next paragraph. Now here we have the difference between Malachim and the Shamas. That's uh, uh, a very uh, common discussion in Hasidus. Um, the, um, that's the difference between the birth of the Shamas and the birth of Malachim. The source of the birth of Malachim is from a very spiritual thing. The Zivug Nashikim of Abba Ve'ima. In other words, Chochman Bina interlink with a something which is called Zibug Nashikin, and, uh, and that's Istabkus Rucha Berucha, very beautiful, very spiritual. Chabad Shubh Chabad. Chabad Be Chabad. The, the Chochma Bin Adas connects with Chochma Bin Adas. And that is an illumination of the wisdom of Chochma into Bina, Ma'ayn Liyesh, from the source of Chochma and Hatzilas. And um, just the same, it's similar, like parallel to our power to think up ideas. That's very nice. But the Shamas, Abul Shoresh and the Shamas, comes from Zivu Gufni, the Zevanukva. 
it's a male and female, it's the lower series, Chagas Nahi, connecting with Malchus, like Zer, and Zor, and, and, and Nukfa, or the, 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 like in a human being, you've got the idea in the mind, and you've got the actual physicality of the body. And with that, there comes the mind, the Churin, the quality, the, the seminal flow from Zor, into the, which comes from the Pneumius Hamurchin of Abba, of Chochmah, which is called Tipas Abba, the seminal drop from Abba. And that, and, and even though it's very coarse, nonetheless, it's got within it, within it Atzmus. And so in the same way, that Tipa above, when we're talking about above in Sviris, uh, infinitely beyond, um, we have that interaction which is the Atzmius of the Matzil, which creates the Neshamas. And that's why a Jew is called Odom, Adam el meaning that Odom is like the essence above. So therefore, we come from a more physical um, a bond and connection. The Neshamas come from a more physical level, and it's that physical level which is represented by the actual blowing of the shofar. So now we come to the next paragraph, Vazel. Vazel Gumkin. Right. Excuse me. Next slide. Now, so there we have the Shoresh of the Indian of Rosh Hashanah, which is the idea of building the Nukfa, building Malchus. And it's very interesting here that um, uh, here he presents the idea that is there in Egeris HaKodesh Simen Yud Dalet, on the one hand. Um, that's the first one, number one. Malchus pours new life force to the lower worlds, which means drawing new moich into the spheres of Malchus through a flow from Chochmah, which has never flowed before, it emphasizes in Tanya. And another thing which Tanya doesn't mention, and it's less often mentioned. I discussed this with a few people. It's, it's, it, it doesn't come up very often, but it's very interesting. Our Neshama gets a Hishachos on, uh, on, on Rosh Hashanah. It's not only the world which is getting a Chidush and we are there and we've got the power to connect the world with Hashem and we're recognizing Hashem as king and so on. Our neshama gets like a new flow from above on Rosh Hashanah. So be, because Rosh Hashanah is the time when Adam Arishan was created, so at that time, it's like we are being recreated. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Uh, and it's, um, it's unusual in a sense. Um, I haven't seen um, many places where this is... Um, Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 I haven't followed up all these sources that, that are there in the Siddur, um, but there are, um, uh, but it's an interesting perspective, a very interesting perspective. So, so, so he makes the point that on the 25th of Elul, the world's created, and Rosh Hashanah is when Adam is created. And so that means it's the actual um, of quality of the birth of the Neshama from Tipas Abba, from the seminal drop, from Chochmah, and from Haya, that is what is happening on Rosh Hashanah. So, so that's the double effect of Rosh Hashanah. And um, uh, just to remember, you know, we are talking about blowing the shofar, and uh, just to lighten things, you know, we got the shofar, uh, here we have a guy somewhere, one a Chabad Shlich somewhere, blowing the shofar in the park. Um, and um, uh, there have been discussion with, uh, uh, you know, various local councils here uh, in London, you know, about blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah in the park and whether that, how many people would constitute a permitted meeting under the co-virus uh, thing. Um, and, uh, you know, and does the shofar... Uh, you know, how, uh, how far away people have to be from the Baltic here. But that is what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about this, this um, uh, you know, this uh, very common dimension and important dimension of our lives in Rosh Hashanah and all the sort of spiritual dimensions that the Mithla Rebbe is explaining. 
So here we have um, blowing the shofar and building malchus. So, um, so that's that's drawing from the inwardness of chachma, because the source of the shofar is from the inwardness of keter of Atik. And that's the, and that is also the drop flowing down to make the neshama as Hashem creates Adam in his image. And also, you see, it's the drop into us and it's also the drop flowing into Malchus to give life to the world. So it's, it's the, a double dimension to the shofar. We are getting more chayas, more spiritual chayas. And the world is getting more chayas. And our job is to connect the world to Hashem. Now, from the um, footnotes in the Siddur, they provide this point, which I think is a very, this is in the new edition of the Siddur. It's a very interesting thing. It's a comment from the Tzemach Tzedek. So the Tzemach Tzedek says, that's why the sound of the shofar is greater than the psukim of Malchus, etc. Because the shofar is maisa, through which the actual moichin are drawn down, while the psukim are only a ha'ora, a gleam, like speech. So that's really encapsulating. The, the, uh, the Mithra Rebbe is giving the like, background to it. He doesn't actually say the words. And the Tzemach Sedeg is supplying this, you know, therefore we see that it's the sound of the shofar which is the real crucial thing. Because it's the shofar which is the miser like the tipper drawing down. Now, Ulohovinzer, we then have um, the next... Now, so here we have the renewal of existence on Rosh Hashanah. It's known that Zohar of Atsilos are the Midas of Atsilos, and they're the Vav Ktsovos, they're the six Midas, Chagas Nahi, right? Chesed, Vurit, Tiferes, Netzer, Chay Yisoy. They are the six days of creation. And they receive from Chochmah and Bina because each Midah, such as Ava, has to be renewed all the time from its source in Seichel. So thus, the first day of creation was Chesed, the second day of creation was Gvura, and so on. And so also through the six millennia, each one, Chesed, Gvura, Tinferes. On every Rosh Hashanah, all of this is renewed. And it has to be renewed with a source from the source, which is Chochmah, and higher, right? Now that's the, um, that, that, that's something that we uh, understand from Egeren Sakoide Simon Yudalit, this kind of concept. And then if we look at it in terms of spheres, the spheres flow into Malchus and from there into the world, but they're renewed from above. So drawing from the flow from above into the spheres is achieved by blowing the sofa, shofar. But all this is external. Let me just, yeah, that's the, that's the, on page 19 in the, in the Machsa and the PDF, Ach kol ze urak bechines chitzoines. All that is external, because the internal is the other dimension. The same pattern is seen as the inner dimension, the renewal of the neshamas. Because the Rosh Hashanah, Adam and Chava were created, so therefore it's as if we are being re recreated. I remember many years ago being in an English shul, and, there was, uh, and it was Rosh Hashanah evening, first night of Rosh Hashanah, and in front of me there's a gentleman and a little girl about 10 years old or something, and she comes in, she's wearing a white dress. She comes up to her father and stands in front of me. And um, the, the father said, oh, you're wearing a nice uh, new dress. She said, yes, mommy told me I've got a new dress and I'm a new girl. 
<laughs> so, so that being a new girl, we're a new person on Rosh Hashanah. It's, it's a very Gishmaka Deha. That's a, we're a new person on Rosh Hashanah as well. That's uh, according, according to this, which I haven't seen so much stressed um, in, uh, in later Mamorim. Now, and then we have Ba'acha Beis Hakdoma Sana. After these two, so there are these two images. Um, um, and so now we come to the, back to the shofar itself. Now we can understand the root of the idea of the blowing of the shofar, which is the simple sound which comes from the Hevel Alei, because it's known that the source of the world is the middle of Malchus, Malchus Chom, Malchus Kolalomim. And in Rosh Hashanah, which is the time when the world is being renewed, that this is the day, the, the beginning of your works, the, remembering the first day, we have to mechadesh the middle of Malchus from its earliest source, its original source. And that's from the world of Tainuk. Now we introduce a new thing, Tainuk, right? It was mentioned in the little summary that the Friedrich Rebbe gave in the Mimer of 1944, if you remember, or 1943. But here is a, uh, uh, we're, we're coming to this concept of Tainug, the world of ta Tainug. Now Tainug is like the idea, you see, um, the highest level of the source is the power of Tainug. Now, so, um, so, so this by arousing the power of delight, in the essence of the soul, in the power of the of the koyach of Hamaskil, that is the real origin of everything, and so that is mechadesh, the Indian of Malchus, and that there should be the rotzen and tainuk in this middle, that there should be in the middle of Malchus, kaviyachol. It's as if Malchus gets weary, kaviyachol. And it needs to be mechudash. And we have to draw down this tainuk from its source. And that is the atzmias koyach tainuk, which comes down, which comes from the atzmias of the Abishta, And that is the source of chokhmah, which is the beginning and which comes down into the world. Now, why is there this focus on time? Why does it have to go back to the source to such an exalted level? Right? So, um, and the next paragraph, Ach, the Malchus of Rakia. Sorry, there's a misprint. It's, it, it says Malch, it, it's, got a, uh, it's got a Ches instead of a, a Lamad. Malchusa. Sorry, there's a, there's a misprint in the slide. I didn't know this. Now, now the reason why we have to draw this Koyach Malchus, we have the idea of the way in which he, he, give, he gives several as, aspects of uh, a Moshe. Uh, so, for example, if a person moves their hand, person moves his hand, this isn't in the slide, the person moves their hand, you don't get any delight that your hand moves, unless chas v'sholem, a person has been paralyzed, and suddenly they can move their hand, they feel a tremendous joy, wow, Baruch Hashem, I can move my hand. Before I was paralyzed, I couldn't move my hand. But normally we just take it for granted, because the hand is part of us. And similarly a king. So here we have a human king, that he has a tainug, a delight, from the way his servants obey his will. All right, so certain kind of king. But that doesn't work for Malchus de Rakia, the heavenly kingship, because Mimcha HaKal, everything is from Hashem. So of course it's all bottled to Hashem. So therefore, the knech here is, existence, the way it is in itself, doesn't give a tainug to the Ebishter. It, we have to be drawn down specially from an exalted level into Chochmah, then into Midas, then into Malchus, to renew creation. 
And so it has to come from the panemius and essence of Hashem. I think there's an extremely profound philosophical point here about the whole nature of meaning of life. Um, we're going to come to um, uh, a, a discussion of that with a, a very sort of mundane uh, topic, um, um, which, uh, which is a moshul, but it's very significant in Hasidus, the mashalim in Hasidus help us understand many aspects of life. And so there is something here in this concept, in this paragraph, that, the, uh, that there, we need to be connected to the source in order for life to have meaning for us. The ordinary activities of life in themselves, even though they may be pleasurable, do not have enough meaning. In fact, Viktor Frankl wrote about this, um, someone whom the Rebbe was very interested in, and I believe you had once a conference, I think, in, the, in, the, in Melbourne, about Viktor Frankl, is that right? With Rabbi Dr. Cohen? I'm not sure, yeah, I think so. So, so Viktor Frankl spoke about noetic neurosis. A person had, lacks meaning, and if they don't have meaning, they become ill. He said, a certain kind of person, it's not everyone, but, it's, but, but people need meaning. And in fact, I, I think he, one could spread that and say really deep down, everyone needs some sense of meaning. And it's when they have no sense of meaning, then they, they, they create uh, like spurious meanings. And, and uh, so, um, so let's try and explore this further. Now, the, um, I'm sorry, I thought, I thought this would be, um, now, so, so we then come that the Hine, in order to arouse the quality of Tainuk, we need the shofar. We come back to the shofar. Speech alone is not enough. Because speech, now here we have the idea of um, um, speech is malchus, but malchus doesn't have Tainuk in itself. So speech is not enough. So there has to be the coil poshut of the shofar reaching the highest level drawing down Tainug into Malchus. And then we have this mundane marshal of delight in work. Is this miner? Is he digging for coal for a mining corporation? And he's going to get, you know, his wage? Or is he digging for gold for himself? How does he feel about it? What idea does he have in his mind? What if he is not a miner for gold, I, I'm, I'm, my wife pointed out that you don't mine for gold in that way. I'm sure you'll know better than me. <laughs> but um, what about if he is an archaeologist? And he's got a theory that under this hill in Yerushalayim, there is buried a certain something from two and a half thousand from the time of Shlomo Amalek. And he's got that theory and he's digging away is he excited about it? Of course he's excited about it. It's very meaningful. There's a whole lot of stuff going into his mind, making that work that he's doing meaningful. So the, so what the Mithra Rebbe does, so a person who enjoys his work, he understands why the work is worth doing. And their, deep, uh, their deeper levels of inner meaning, that flows down to the emotions, flows into one's actions, so one is enthusiastic about one's work, and, la and what if he doesn't enjoy work? He doesn't see any meaning, so he can't be bothered to do it properly. So that he needs a new flow of delight, tainuk, from the highest level of being, and that percolates down through his mind and emotions and reaches their actions. So the nimshal, infinitely beyond, creation is called the work of Hashem. The Torah says Hashem rested from all his work. Work. Um, I'm afraid I have to speed up. I know it's quite late for you at night, but also, unfortunately, there is a Lavoya here in London, Rabbi Yushua Raskin, Oliver Shalom, most wonderful, wonderful person, passed away, and the Lavoya is soon, so I, I have to rush this. Now, he rested from all his work. Rosh Hashanah is the time for a new flow to come from the essence 
in order to infuse Tainu, the light, into the work of creation. And this comes out through the call of the shofar. So that's the other aspect of the shofar, the delight that is coming down into existence. So now, uh, and, and he mentions the way in which the shofar draws from the essence to the essence. The shofar reaches a higher level than Dibbo speech. It reaches the essence of Hashem, the Mashbia, and it also includes the source of the Makabo, the recipient of the flow. So there's the essence of Hashem and the essence of the Makabal. Now, I haven't really thought this through properly, but we could say that because there is the flow coming down into the world, and there's the flow coming down into the Neshamas, so there is a Hizkachos in our Neshama, so that we're able to receive in a greater way and relate better to the Abishta. So through the letter Aleph, of the sound of the shofar, the tainug is drawn from the essence of Hashem to the essence of oneself and the essence of existence. Now, now we have another motion. Um, um, so this is um, that that idea. Um, we 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 now come to. Um, a question that a person could have when they learn Perit Yudalad of Tanya. So it says that Rosh Hashanah is the renewal of the source of Moichin for Malchus. Malchus gives existence to the world. The source, the flow, goes back to its source. Now, but the universe doesn't disappear. So what is happening? A sleeping person can answer simple questions and feel pain. So before the life force has been renewed in Rosh Hashanah, it's as if existence is asleep. It's still there, but the inner life force has gone back to its root. But the inner life force has a direct effect on the external aspect. So what we're doing on Rosh Hashanah is drawing that inner life force to the world and to ourselves and making the whole thing much more alive, ready for Mashiach. Now then, also in Perit Yodalad of Tanya, it refers to the concept of the Nesira, the Nesira, the separation of Zohar Malchus. So now there's a bit about this, the concept of Nesira. First of all, we have the idea of Chochmah, spheres of Zerampin flowing into Malchus, right? Now, the thing is that before Rosh, before Rosh Hashanah, there is the idea of Malchus and Zohar being on the same level. They're on the same level and they're like joined together, like Ottoman and Chava before Chava was separated from Adam. So that's the Nasira, the separation. The Nasira separates Zohar and Malchus. In, and so that's where it says, Vizehu Inyan Hanasira. So in Bereshis, Hashem makes Adam fall asleep and took one of his sides, as, uh, as Rashi explains, to make the feminine as a separate being. They were originally back to back. And then Hashem separated them. That's the Nasira at that level. On the spheres, Zor means the higher spheres, Chagasnahi, and, and Malchus, they're together with one wall round both of them, says the Ariza. Then they're separated, and Malchus becomes a separate part, Suf, a separate sphere, um, and, 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 and with ten spheres of its own. And that's called also sweetening the Gvurus of Malchus. So we've got the image of the Nasira and also Hamtokus HaGvurus. So the Gvurus, <coughs> he explains, So what does it mean about the, um, the Gvurus? First of all, when they have one wall, it means they have similar gvuras. Now, what's the gvuras of Zohar Malchus? They're reaching upwards. They're both seeking to be up instead of flowing down to make a deal of Hashem in this world. The whole problem is Ruchnius wants to stay Ruchni. It wants to remain with Hashem. And that the gvura in this sense is like the fire burning upwards. It wants to connect with its source. And somehow the direction has to be turned that it should flow from above downwards. And that is chesed. 
Chesed, like water, flows from above downwards. Fire burns upwards. So the power of the Gvura, which is reaching up, has to be somehow turned around so that it's flowing down. And that's the sweetening of the Gvuras with Chesed. And that means that Chesed pour, that's the paragraph, but Chesed pours to Malchus, sweetening the Gvura, making it flow down like Chesed, like water flowing down, creating the world, which will be the dwelling for Hashem, as Kiyomati Oilum Chesed Yibone, the world is built by Chesed. And the Shoifa sweetens the Gvuras. Now here we have a very subtle thing, and I had a long discussion with the Chaba about this. We looked up in the Zoya Kodesh, it all relates to the Zoya and Pasha's Emma, which has a long section on Tkia Shoifa. <coughs> this is the way we understand it, Bedera Hefshem. There are, there is a Sikha which mentions this part of the Maimah, but it doesn't go into this Indian <coughs> from Tov Shinyud base. Each strophe of the Shoifa, that means Tekiya, Shvorim, Tekiya, Tekiya, Trua, Tekiya, right? So that's the strophe. It's got three elements, Tekiya, then Trua, which may be Shvorim, Trua, Shvorim, or Trua, and then again Tekiya. Those are the three aspects. The middle aspect corresponds to Yitzchok, which is Gvura. This has to be sweetened by the Chesed of Avra, and that is achieved by Yaakov, which is Rachamim, arousing the Chesed of Avra. And it seems the first Tekiya is Avram, the second, the Trua, in the middle is Yitzchok, and the final Tekiya is Yaakov, is Rachmi. <coughs> so what's happening is there's a flow of Chesed flowing into Yitzchok, sweetening the Gvuras of Yitzchok, and the final Tekiya is like the Rachmim, which links back to Avram. It's the Rachmim which arouses the Chesed of Avram. Now, why, the Maimah asks, why do the Gvurus of Chesed, of, of Yitzchok, have to be sweetened to become Chesed? Why don't we just have a flow of Chesed? Forget about the Gvurus. The Gvurus are okay themselves. We'll just deal with Chesed coming from Avro. <coughs> and it gives a stunning answer. Gvura is more powerful than Chesed. When Gvura is sweetened, it gives an intense flow of Chesed, which Chesed itself could not provide. So, so that's what has to happen, that there is this tremendous power. The Abe Zaroi, I will increase his seed, and Abe has the same gematria as Yitzchak. The problem of Gura is it's got this wonderful power, but it wants to rise above like fire. But by sweetening it, it's able to flow downwards towards the world. And, um, and so that is... Um, and so there we have the Nasira separating Malchus from Zor so that Malchus can now act in the world. So in other words, Malchus gets separated, becomes an independent Svira and a whole part of with, with, um, with all the Svirus in Malchus and is then able to pour the flow down into the world. And so, and so it comes through this process of sweetening. And that also is what's happening when you're blowing the shofar. You're sweetening the glorious of Yitzchak, bringing about this tremendous flow downwards. And be, we can see that the power of Yitzchak is tremendously strong because the, yit, the brachas that Yitzchak gave Yaakov are amazing brachas. The yitn mecholekim It's stunning. When, and, and the Maima compares with other brachas, like Avram hardly gives brachas. Yaakov more tells what's going to be in the future. Moshe even doesn't really give brachas of the kind that Yitzhak gives. Y- Yitzhak gives real blessings because Gvura is the source <coughs> of powerful blessings and these are drawn down by the Shoifah. Now the last passage of the Maima is uh, answers the basic question as a Sikha uh, or Maima all about this in the Mamori Maluka. Why did Yitzhak want to bless, bless Esau? And the point is that the Gvura, the violence of Esau, was the dross, the psoilus of the Gvura of Yitzhak. He thought the only way to transform Esau, Yitzhak thought the only way to transform Esau was giving him the brachas, and through that way there would be the Bira of Esau. But that would take a long time, in fact. 
by the fact that Yaakov, wearing the clothes of Esau, got the brachas. He drew down the powerful energy from Yitzchak. And through that, instead of the long time it would take to transform Esau, Mashiach can come now. And that's how the Maimah ends with Mashiach. That's the last word of the Maimah. And that's the last word of the Kavana of Tkiyaz Shofar. So um, it is uh, very late. Um, I think um, I'm not I'm sorry, I've, I've overridden my own time. Um, and I imagine there may be questions. People could, if they like, maybe Motti could organize, you know, if people wanted to send, or, or uh, are, there, are there any questions? Let, let, me, let me stop sharing. Are there any questions? I mean, it's a very, very right. I'm, 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 I'm happy to ask a question if I can. Right. Um, usually, usually um, Gevura, at least Gashmias, which is compared to Gevura, is, is drawing down and wants to go down. But you seem to be saying, or the Rebbe seems to be saying in the Maimah, that this Gevura is uh, like fire and it's going up. I thought that light was going up and, and the opposite was going down. Or... Um, usually Gevura is seen in terms of a movement up. You know, that, that's a very common image in Hasidus, like the fire, okay. the fire which burns upwards. And one aspect of Gvura that we're going to come to in two days' time in the Shaitanya, in the education process, Chesed is the wish to give, to teach the idea, and Gvura is the wish to restrain it, because you think a person can't understand, well, some other reason. It's, uh, so, so Gvura is always like a withdrawal. Whereas chesed is involvement. Any other points? Thank you very much, Dr. Lointel. Well, I would recommend people uh, just take this as a kind of overview akdoma and learn the mind inside. And that's just such a everyone should have a ksiva v'chasim atovah, l'shon atovah v'sukah, with, as the Maimah, the last line of the Maimah, with Mashiach now, Mamash. Amen. Thank you, Marty, for you. setting this up. Call to. Amen. Hey, Shakoya. Good to you. Shakoya. Hold on one second. Okay. I do see some things in the chat. Let me just see if I can. Okay. Um, in the marshal of the seed, Melamata Lamaila to arouse the Kahat Smech Elian Shimitan. I think in, in the marshal of the seed, the Tekir Shrefa is, is, is both. It, it, and then all the time, it's, it's, it's both. It's the point where both the upper and the lower connect. And, and it's drawing down, but in such a way that it can come down into the world. All right. I got, I got your to everyone. Can the slides be made available? Yes, I'll email the whole thing to Motti, uh, but I can't do it this minute. Okay, okay, I got your to everyone.